Hi there and welcome to another update on the volcanic situation in Iceland, in the impending situation we have with a possible and what's now looking like a, a very likely or probable uh, eruption on the Reykjanes Peninsula here in Iceland. Uh, I'm Sean Wilsey, geology professor. I did an update on Friday uh, November 3rd and today's Monday November 6th. I thought I'd do another one here because uh, all the signs are still pointing towards possibly something happening uh, in the short term. So let's let's go over again uh, what's been going on. I've got some data to look at with you uh, and then there's some other developments in Iceland with uh, preparation for this impending or at least possible uh, eruption. So last time we went over the, the last three eruptions, you can see over here uh, on the right, the 2021, 2022, and earlier this year, the eruptions over here. Uh, and what's interesting about this latest um, intrusion of magma is its location uh, has shifted further west and it's putting at risk the Blue Lagoon and power plant here just to the north and also the town of Grindavik, uh, the fishing village which lies to the south, in addition to the highways and these roadways that are also in the area. In looking at some of the topographic data, I think on last week's update, I, I, I thought that maybe the airport in this area might be at risk, but in looking at some of the topography, I, I don't think that's a real likely scenario. I think a lot of this lava would end up uh, going to the south, maybe a little bit to the west, um, but mainly to the to the south. Um, and so let's remember too that Iceland, at least in this region of Iceland, the main type of eruption style we see is lava flows. And so you can actually see here, let me take out this row here. This is actually a row of craters, not too far from where we think this next eruption might occur. Uh, a lot of these bigger craters and these small chain of craters here, these are the Elvorp craters, um, these all erupted uh, in the, from about 950 to 1240, somewhere in there, uh, uh, AD. And so these, this area hasn't had a big eruption um, for quite some time, you know, hundreds of years. And, but this area was racked by series of eruptions for a good 300 or so years. This was a very active region in Iceland, and it's only been in the last few years that we've seen uh, volcanic activity resume in this part of Iceland. But let's remember what, what we're dealing with here. We're dealing with a system that will produce uh, a lot of lava. It'll produce low viscosity lava. So this lava will be quite fluid and hot and uh, will run downhill. This lava will not trap a lot of gases and so therefore it will not be very explosive. So it's not gonna inundate the airport with ash. It's not gonna produce a lot of ash at all. It's only gonna locally produce a little bit of ash as that lava kind of bubbles out of the ground and out of the vents that it produces. I put the vent here, um, but this is somewhat speculative. It could be somewhere anywhere in this region here. And for that, you know, it could be right under the Blue Lagoon itself for all we know, but this, this sort of um, region I'm outlining here is more or less the area of uplift that we have some concern with. So let's look at some of the data. So this is um, the earthquake data over the last uh, 48 hours or so. Again, the colors correspond to how recent it is. So red, orange, yellow, and then you get into the blues. Those are uh, two days or so old. And then the stars are magnitude three and above earthquakes. You can see just the, the area being riddled by numerous earthquakes, presumably as this magma is rising into uh, the subsurface beneath this region. It's breaking rock, it's cracking rock, and that's what's producing a lot of these earthquakes here is the magma intruding and, and forcing its way into the surrounding rock. Um, the earthquakes have trailed off a little bit. If you look at the most recent earthquakes today on Monday, um, we haven't had some of the big ones here for the last few hours. Um, but again, you can see other lulls in the activity here. So this does not indicate that uh, it's it's shutting down or slowing down at all. You just somewhat, you sometimes get this somewhat um, I wouldn't call it cyclic, but just you get lulls in the earthquake activity over time. Um, and the Icelandic Met Office, which is monitoring the situation, uh, had this post today on, again, uh, Monday, November 6th. Uh, the, the combined uplift now in the region is at about seven centimeters. So in 10 days, the ground has risen 
uh, about seven centimeters, which is pretty remarkable. Uh, that's all about three inches or so, um, and that's a lot. It probably doesn't sound like a lot, but in the world of volcanology and monitoring and ground deformation, uh, that's pretty notable. Uh, and you can see here, last 24 hours, about 1,300 earthquakes, um, largest of which was about a 3.6. Uh, and then scrolling down a little bit further, this is I found this pretty interesting here. Um, so they talk about the deformation being a sill type intrusion. What that means is that the magma is not coming up in a vertical orientation. It's coming up, uh, it's probably coming up th through a dike, a vertical orientation, but as it's getting closer, it's found some weak spot and it's now spreading out. So it's forming a, a horizontal or lateral uh, type of intrusion of magma and then this is the part I found most uh, interesting and, and somewhat uh, compelling uh, mod the modeling based on data indicates that the volume change associated with this inflation event has reached almost two times the volume change associated with the four previous inflation events uh, in the same area between 2000, 2020 to 2022 so basically what that's saying then is that um, the modeling just again based on what the, what they're seeing with the inflation of the ground is it's indicative of more magma rising than what we've seen with any of the other eruptions the 2021 the 2022 the 2023 so that doesn't mean that all of that magma is going to erupt um, and we don't have any indications yet that the magma has moved any closer to the surface um, but it is indicative that there's potentially more magma that could erupt which um, which would be unfortunate, especially with the proximity to the, the fishing village there. Um, so hopefully that, that makes sense. Um, so the bottom line is there appears to be more magma that has risen. That doesn't mean it'll all erupt, um, but it's getting uh, closer, uh, or it, there's more magma that could erupt. Inflow of magma into the siltite body is estimated at approximately uh, seven cubic meters per second, which is about four times greater than the highest inflow from the previous of in inflation event. So what we're seeing then is that this specific event seems to show more magma potentially erupting than what we've seen with these last three eruptions. And I think that's where some of the concern uh, is really coming into play. Here's the GPS station on Thorbjorn, um, which is a, a mountain right there above. It has uh, some uh, different communication towers right above the Blue Lagoon and the power plant there. So you can see here um, in the last data point here, this would be on Sunday, but you can see this again, market shift downward. This is going from October 22nd, 23rd ish, end of October into early November. So everything is shifting uh, to the south. Okay, so if you're in, if your intrusion is just to the north of this receiver, this, this uh, GPS station on the mountain, then you would expect if everything's uplifting to the north then the receiver station the gps station would shift a little bit southward so that's what we're seeing here so that lets us know that the main magma intrusion is slightly north of this station and then similarly on the east west plot you can see a marked movement uh, to the east and so it's shifting further to the east which suggests again that the magma body is west of there so this data here tells us that the magma intrusion is um north of the mountain and a little bit west of it so that helps us kind of constrain it spatially in terms of location and then this is the uplift here which is this is where that seven centimeters or so comes in so about 70 millimeters seven centimeters of uplift uh, in a little less than in than two weeks or so um, pretty remarkable um, and then in terms of what the uh, authorities there are doing so this came out just today as well this is a um, map of the little town of Grindavik. So if we come down here, this is small town fishing village here. Uh, and this is the place that's most at, th most at risk from an eruption. And so they've actually put together a um, evacuation map, uh, letting people know which way they should go. So the red routes are the place, ways they can get out of town. So there's a route, there's a road here to the north, road to the uh, west and another road out here to the east. Of course, this will all depend so much on so much on how where the lava is coming from and how it's moving into towards the town and how much time they have. Um, but they are at least thinking about it. Uh, they're noting certain 
landmarks and places within town um, where the police station is gathering places uh, even routes within the neighborhoods because some of these are dead-end streets where they want people to know exactly which roads they can get on in order to get out to these evacuation routes so uh, just know that the communities there are putting a lot of effort into notifying the residents so that uh, everyone is ready and kind of on alert depending on this how this thing plays out um, this is just sort of the, the second page of that that evacuation thing there um, somewhat alarming to me <laughs> is the fact that the uh, the Blue Lagoon the big number one tourist attraction in Iceland this big resort spa hot spring area here uh, is apparently still open even though uh, you know this eruption could take place right next to or practically underneath the Blue Lagoon um, so it's a little befuddling to me that they're actually still operating because um, they would have possibly little to no warning uh, once the lava if that lava comes out as much lava is being stored there if that lava erupts quickly if there's an effective conduit system that is quickly developed uh, that forms a volcanic vent um, you could get that lava moving into this area over this flat ground uh, pretty quickly and again I've got my little little icon here of where I think you know just roughly where it could be but that you could move this further to the north uh, and so they're really looking at possibly a matter of minutes uh, before they're they're seeing lava at the Blue Lagoon and the power plant and so uh, hopefully they'll make some good decisions there um, I don't think I would be booking a trip to the Blue Lagoon in terms of just traveling to Iceland I've had some people reach out and said hey I've got tickets in a couple of weeks or we're planning to go there I would still go in fact I I you know um, I would not change my travel plans at all the airport will still be fully operating uh, much of the rest of Iceland will be un unaffected the only area of impact would be this little region down here so it's possible that some of these roadways are closed um, and the village could be in trouble and inaccessible but otherwise if you have a travel plans in Iceland um, I wouldn't change those uh, the country depends on tourism which is a major source of income and so it, it would be a shame to have a large sort of panic um, globally where people aren't coming to Iceland um, when it's really just this small area that's affected so um, and then finally um, if you want to kind of keep tabs on this there are some webcams that are set up in Iceland uh, so this is the live from Iceland site and this particular uh, image here now of course it's uh, dark now in Iceland at this time of day it's almost uh, midnight there as I'm speaking um, but what you're seeing there uh, off in the distance that's looking towards the airport in the Keflavik area uh, and then in the middle ground over here this is the power plant in the Blue Lagoon uh, but this camera is positioned and it does pan back and forth a little bit um, but it's basically covering the area where we would expect or predict uh, the eruption to occur if it does occur and so if anything happens um, this would be the place you would see it first uh, it would just show up here uh, you'd see the eruption actually live more or less with this webcam uh, and then we would obviously hear word of it through different news outlets and such so uh, anyway but that's my my summary um, so it's exciting in one sense because uh, volcanic eruptions are exciting and we learn a lot from them and it's uh, absolutely beautiful and mesmerizing uh, but I'm going to temper that a little bit in this case um, with the uh, possible impact we have to the Blue Lagoon the power plant and also this this town down here so these folks here um, we're hoping the best for them hopefully we get a nice little eruption um, and possibly the lava routed some other way but the way things are looking right now um, the eruption while it's not a certainty it's looking very likely I don't know what percentage I would put on it maybe 70 percent and again I don't have all the nitty-gritty data in front of me but based on everything we've seen with these last three eruptions and everything we're seeing with this one um, it's looking like an eruption is very likely uh, I don't know if I'd use the word imminent but I'd say li very likely or probable within the next let's say week to two weeks so but we'll just see how the data goes uh, if there's any notable changes I'll try to put together another update for you but thanks for joining me and hopefully this was helpful take care